Carolyn, we've got some great amounts of crystal and material here and some solutions. What are we doing today here? We are actually going to study limiting reactants and stoichiometry. It's, it's my favorite subject in chemistry. But before we do anything, let me ask you this very important question. Have you ever made chocolate chip cookies? I love chocolate chip oh, cookies. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I've made chocolate <laughs> chip cookies for decades. And my favorite recipe always uses one cup of butter. Okay. It's my favorite recipe. Now, if I one day wanted to make chocolate chip cookies and opened up my cupboards and found everything else that I needed, but then the refrigerator only shows that I have only a half a cup of butter in the house, what would that do with an amount of cookies that I can make from that recipe? That would make a bad cookie. No, it will not make it. <laughs> so it's it would work. mean that you can only make <laughs> half the amount of cookies you that you wanted to make because that's what a limiting reactant is. It is the one that gets used up first and it's going to dictate how much product you can make at the end. So it doesn't matter how much of all the other ingredients you have, you are always going to be limited in the amount of product you can make by that limiting reactant. Today, we are going to study that. Not only are we going to figure out what the limiting reactant is, we're also going to be able to tell the stoichiometry of the reaction. Our recipe today only has two ingredients. One of them is 0.12 molar sodium bicarbonate. So Roger's holding it up. And the other ingredient is citric acid. So the reaction between Sodium bicarbonate and citric acid produces carbon dioxide as one of its products, okay? Now, I know you can go into the literature and figure out what that whole reaction looks like, and you can probably, but just by looking at the reaction, figure out how to balance that reaction. What I want to do today is to have you figure that out on your own experimentally. So how are we going to do this? We have a chamber, a 500 milliliter chamber, that has 40 milliliters of sodium bicarbonate in it. In every single one of these runs, we will not change the volume of sodium bicarbonate. Your job is to be able to determine how many moles of sodium bicarbonate are being used in every single one of these runs. We will be adding to each of to, to these runs, we will be adding citric acid. And the citric acid that we have today uh, has been masked at different levels. We have 0.1 gram, 0.2 gram, 0.3, 0.4, and 0.5. I and will tell you right now, in some of those cases, citric acid is going to be your limiting reactant. And in some of them, Sodium bicarb is going to be the limiting reactant. Somewhere in between is that happy place where the mole ratios of both bicarbonate and citric acid are perfect. And that's where your balanced equation is going to come from. And these amounts are written in your lab as well, so you can get those total amounts from the lab sheet. Okay. So as we mentioned, we are going to be looking for the production of carbon dioxide gas. And for that, we are going to be using our PASCO wireless sensor. So Roger, mm -hmm. since you are the stronger one of the two of us, how about you pick up our first sample, which is 0.1 molar citric acid. And this is one of the reasons why you want to do this with a partner. Because while somebody is setting up and running the experiment, somebody gets to press the start button, and that is my favorite job. So let me know when you're ready, dude. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna pour this in and then cap it off as quickly as I can. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a flick to get all this material into this sodium uh, bicarbonate. One, two, three. There we go. And swirl it around just a little bit. Oh, you can already see that gas is being produced. And that is indicated by the change in pressure. And how long are we going to measure this? We're going to be measuring this for about 60 seconds. Okay. Unless it flattens out very quickly. In which case, all of the material is reacted and all the CO2 has been given up. That's right. 
Looks like it's starting to curve a little. It's beginning to slow down just a little bit. Nice. Yep, it's almost to flat. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to stop it right here. Excellent. All right. We are going to collect the data from 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0.5 citric acid. But in the meantime, what I would like for you to do is to look at the table on your worksheet and start calculating how many moles of citric acid and how many moles of bicarb you are using in every single one of these runs. And in every single one of these runs, we're going to use 40 milliliters of the 0.12 molar bicarbonate. All right, go ahead and get those ready and we'll make these runs so that they'll be in there when you open this data set.